welcome welcome back to my channel if you're new here my name is Miriam and I talk about all kinds of sewing and mostly quilting things here on YouTube today as you can tell by the thumbnail and the title of this video we are making a huge tote bag slash weekender bag and this was such a fun project to work on I cannot wait to show you guys the entire process of making it I had some bumps in the road those are in the video you will see it and kind of how I problem solved and fixed the issues that I was getting I just had a lot of fun making this tote bag so the pattern that I used was by anti twos and it is their big katadin tote so this is what the pattern looks like I got this and everything that I used for the bag from Missouri Star Quilt Company if you would like to uh, you can use my link and purchase whatever you want from Missouri Star Quilt Company. It doesn't have to be these items. And you can get 20% off your total order if it's $50 or more. And that uh, discount is applied automatically at checkout. You don't have to remember a link or anything. Just use my link and you are set. Add at least $50 worth of products to your total or to your cart and then you'll get 20% off, which is a really great deal. And you can use that link as many times as you want. Um, it's not like a once a month type thing. That's how it used to be, but now you can use it as many times as you want. All of the products used for this bag does total over $50. So if you did want to make the same same bag that I made, you'd be able to get 20% off your, your total with that. I will say that this is not a tutorial for this bag. I, I feel very strongly against teaching a full tutorial on someone else's pattern. I just don't think that would be very fair if I was giving you all of the information that's in the pattern because, you know, this isn't my pattern. I don't get to give out the information that's inside here just to, you know, thousands of people on YouTube. So I just wanted to throw that out there. So if you're wanting a full tutorial, this is not it. But if you get this pattern and you want to sew along with me, that would be great. Or if you're thinking about getting this pattern or something like it, Anti Twos has a lot of bag patterns. So I give, I kind of give a little bit of a review on this pattern as well as I'm going through. And just a heads up, I love it. And I love her descriptions, her photos and her patterns. These are just really, really great. Without further ado, let's jump right into the video. You'll see me first starting to cut fabric and then we will go from there. I hope you enjoy. It's a very long video. There'll be chapters. So it'll be separated out into the different parts of the bag that I'm making. So if you don't want to watch the entire thing, you don't have to. <laughs> so I'm trying to make it easy, but it this video is over an hour long. So I just, I had over three hours worth of footage and I was able to condense it down to a little over an hour. It is, it is what it is guys. Okay. <laughs> All right. I hope you enjoy the video and I will check back with you at the end where I give the grand reveal of the bag. So enjoy and thank you for watching. Okay, first things first, I am cutting out the pieces of the fabric that I need to cut out. So I'm using a jelly roll for most of the bag, but for several of the smaller pieces, I got this really pretty coral fabric from Confetti Solids and I'm just going to cut out all the pieces that I need before I start making the bag. And I like to do this with pretty much any project that I'm working on. I really like to cut everything out and make sure I had enough fabric for everything and I'm just set and ready to go. So I'm just cutting out my pieces here and the pattern actually recommends labeling everything. So that's what I'm doing. So that's you'll see those little pieces of white paper. I'm making my little labels and then pinning them to the fabric and that makes it a lot easier for when we go to make the bag. So let's get started. Okay so I got all my lining pieces and binding pieces and everything cut and labeled so that's all ready. So now I get to start on making the little tubes that are going to be the background. So I'm unwrapping my little batting roll here oh this is cool so it's rolled up it's kind of like a roll of toilet paper basically <laughs> to make the little tubes 
I need my little batting strips and my fabric strips. I'm gonna keep that ribbon. I don't know about you guys, but I always keep my little ribbons from all of my pre-cuts because I feel like I could use it for something. Maybe I'll add it onto the bag, we'll see. We'll see what I figure out. So right now, all I have to do is make all the little tubes. I am just gonna work on that. So I'm unrolling the jelly roll. And look how cute this is. I love all the little stars. This is gonna be really cute. I'm really excited about this. I am going to work on that. So basically what you do for the little tubes, sorry, my nose is really itchy. That batting was like really dusty. I take a strip of fabric and I take a strip of batting. Is there? Are these strips or is this just one long? Oh, is it one long thing? It's one long thing, so I cut it. Interesting. Okay, well that that answers a question. So I put them with the batting on the wrong side of the fabric and then I just line them up. And then we fold in the raw edges onto the inside in half. So about half like that. And then we fold it again. And we make a little tube that way. And then I just stitch down the center of this little tube. And that creates the little pieces of the outside of the bag. So that's what I'm going to be working on. Yeah, this is gonna take a while, but it's gonna be fun. I like doing stuff like this. And I need to grab my scissors so I can cut the batting as I'm going. Then after I get all the tubes made, I think I make 40 tubes. Then I get to kind of play around with the placement of them and kind of figure out how I want all of the colors and stuff. So that will be really fun. Wow, my nose is so itchy. <sighs> and I'm not usually allergic to cotton or anything or dust. <laughs> Anyways, so I'm going to get my scissors and I'm just gonna start making these tubes until it's time for lunch. And then I'm gonna go eat lunch because I'm getting hungry. <laughs> So yeah, let's make some little fabric tubes. <laughs> okay, you guys, I am working on the first little tube strip thing and this is so much fun. <laughs> uh, if, if you need a tote bag, I would recommend trying this out. And I've only done like, I've worked on one strip, but look how cute this looks so far. It's like a little tube. It's nice and like plush. Like the bag is gonna be so plush and cozy and it looks really cute with the stitching down the center. It's just a straight stitch, but you just do a straight stitch down the center and this is so much fun. Yeah, so I will do like a close up of how I'm doing it just so you can see how it's done. And then I will continue making my strips, but I just had to show you like how easy this is and how fun it is. So let me get the camera over here. So this part I do with a straight stitch, but then when I'm actually attaching the tubes together, I'm gonna have to use a zigzag stitch. And unfortunately my Juki does not do a straight stitch. So I'm gonna have to break out my Singer. So you'll get to see that machine, which is where it all began for me for quilting. <laughs> but um, okay, let's see, can I have this focus there? Yeah, all right. So basically I'm just kind of doing it a little bit at a time in the pattern. It says that you can like pin it in place and then just remove the pins as you go. But I'm just skipping that step and I'm just kind of going as folding it as I go. So I just kind of fold this in about a half an inch and then I fold the other side in so they meet. And then I fold that over because you want all the raw edges to be on the inside and then I line up the folds right here and then I just do a straight stitch down the center and then I just am continuing that process and I'm almost done with this strip fold it in fold that side in and fold it all over. I kind of use my finger and kind of go in there and make sure everything's smooth. And oh my goodness, this is so much fun. <laughs> and there, that one is done. So I'm just gonna cut my threads, just to cut this straight. And there I'm ready to start with the next strip. 
And there, that's the first one is done. Here, let me zoom out. But there it is. There we go. Pretty cool. Oh my goodness. I really love this technique. It's, it's very fun. It's very satisfying doing it. So I am going to continue doing this. And once I'm all done, then I'll catch back up with you guys and let you watch me while I try, while I painstakingly try to decide how I want all of the colors. Do I want it kind of how it was in the roll, all the colors in order, or do I want to mix it up? I don't know. I'll probably try a few different, a few different layouts and figure out which one I like best, but I will talk to you soon. <laughs> Check it out, everybody. I got all the strips sewn together. How pretty are these? <laughs> I am like super excited making this tote. Uh, today is day two. This actually took me several hours yesterday to sew these up together. I called it a night after I was done sewing those together because I was tired of just sitting here sewing. <laughs> now is the fun part where I get to kind of figure out the color layout that I want to do. So on their example, on the front of the pattern, it kind of has the darker colors on the outside and then the lighter colors on the in the center kind of going inward. So I'm just going to play around with a few different layouts and kind of figure out what I want to do. I will show you the different options as I do them and then we'll go from there. So after that, then we sew the strips together using a zigzag stitch. And as you know, my Juki TL2010Q is a straight stitch only machine. So I'll have to set her aside so I can bring out my singer, do my zigzag stitch on that. So yeah, I'm actually thinking about possibly doing a different stitch besides just a regular zigzag stitch. I'll have to look at the decorative stitches that I have on my machine because I just feel like another stitch could be really really cute on there so and as long as it's holding the pieces together well then I might do that because I know I have this kind of like vine looking design on there that I think would look really cute with this first things first I got to clear off the other side of my table so I have a space to lay out the strips and then what I will do to make sure that I sew them in the right the right order is I'll just take my phone and I will take a picture of the layout that I choose and then just use that as a guide while I'm sewing them together because I don't have like a design board or anything. So, and obviously I don't have any space on my wall to make like a design wall. I would love to have one. In my someday fabulous quilting studio, I will have a design wall and that'll be a lot easier to do that sort of thing. But for now, I will just figure out the layout and then take a picture of it and look at it on my phone. Yes, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I will show you the different options that I figure out and you'll see which one I decide on. Okay, here is my first option here. Here's the center is right here. So I've kind of got it mirrored on either side. And then these center four strips, there was only one of each of those. So I put those in the center. So that's my first choice. Or my first option. I like it, but I kind of want to play around with the colors a little bit more and see if I like something a little bit better. I am going to switch them around and see if I can come up with a better color option for me. Hey, okay. it may not look different, but it is. <laughs> I just switched around a few of the strips, kind of evenly dispersing the black strips, which I think helps a lot. And I moved a couple of the white strips in between some of the clusters of colors just so it's a little bit more even and I think this looks really good. I've got my little singer machine put in place. My Juki's just sitting down there on the floor for right now. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and take a picture of this with my phone. On my machine I have, this is the Singer Patchwork. This is a fantastic beginner quilting machine. This is the machine that I really learned a lot on and I learned how to free motion quilt on this machine. See how tiny it is? Look at this tiny throat space and I was able to free motion quilt. Uh, I think I did a queen size quilt with this 
with this machine. It's just really great. Singer is a great brand and I'll probably always keep it just because it's so special for to me. These are the decorative stitches that I have available. Pattern says just to use a zigzag stitch but then they say you can use other stitches if you want. So I'm a little tempted to use number 26. So it's a little bit different than a zigzag, but it still goes in that zigzag formation. I'll try it out on my first set of strips and see how it goes. So I really like to do like number 15. I think that one's really cool, but that might just be a little much. So I'm gonna try a more simple number 26 just to see how it goes. And if that goes okay, then maybe I'll do that one. Number 27 is really cute though too. Hmm, and that might like, this actually might look really cool. The fabrics have so many stars on them, you know, it's starry, so it's just covered in stars. So I'm wondering if that would look cool because I'm using this like cream thread, which by the way, I have really liked so far. So Missouri Star Cool Company thread, it's been good so far. I need to think about that here real quick. Number 26 or number 27. You know what? Let's try number 27 and see what it looks like. And hopefully it doesn't take a super long time. I know it's going to take longer than a regular zigzag stitch, but it might be worth it because it is very cute. I'm going to get a picture of my strips, then I will start sewing them together. I'm going to try and just leave my strips there and maybe while I'm sewing I won't push them out of the way and I'll just be able to sew that way. But first I need to get some thread in my bobbin. So turn my machine on. Yeah, I really love this machine. My dad actually bought it for me. So when I learned how to quilt, I think I had made a couple of quilts, just really simple little ones. And he could tell that I was really into the sewing and quilting and I was getting very excited about it. So he told me to pick out a machine and this is the one that I picked out. And I love it. This is really thrilling stuff, right? <laughs> I really hope I have enough thread for this project. I didn't think I would use an entire spool, but I used quite a bit of thread for just sewing the strips up with the batting. All right, now let's get you over here so you can actually see what I'm doing a little bit here, huh? Look at that cute little machine. It's so cute. <laughs> I also love this machine because, you know, it's like, I think when my dad got it for me several years ago, it was like $250, which seemed like a lot of money at the time <laughs> to me. Yeah, you don't have to spend, you know, over $1,000, over $500, over $300 to get a really great machine that you can use for quilting, especially when you're just starting out, you know? And I think that not very many people say that <laughs> because they want you to buy the machine that they are trying to sell for whatever company that they're working with. I know I personally work with uh, the company Juki Junkies. A lot of you know them from here on YouTube and they're really great, but I only recommend Juki machines because I have personal experience with it and I love my Juki machine and I trust Juki Junkies and their company because they have just such excellent customer service. They're really great. Next time I need to buy a machine, I will be buying from them. Yeah, I just, uh, I really appreciate how much they go above and beyond for their customers. And I, I just really, really like that. I like that about a company. Let's sew some together. So first I am going to do stitch 27. So I gotta select that here. And in the pattern, they recommend to use a wide stitch. So I think this is already set to be pretty wide. Let's see. Let me get a scrap piece of fabric here so I can test this really quick. I just wanna make sure that it's gonna be a good size. I'm gonna put my needle down feature on. All right, let's see what this looks like. That's actually going pretty quick though. My goodness, that is tight. My tension is very, very tight, but it'll probably be better when I'm, oops. Oh, that's what was happening. The thread got stuck down in there. That's what it looks like. I think that's pretty cute. Let's see, can I make this wider? Let's 
see what that looks like. A lot of times when I do decorative stitches with this machine, I don't like to go at like top speed. I feel like the stitch looks a little bit more sloppy when you go at top speed. That's what it looks like. I think it's kind of cute. I think I'm just gonna do number 26. I've used that for other projects and I really like it. It's just a little bit different than regular zigzag. Yeah, that looks good. Uh, you might not be able to see it cause it's kind of kind of jumble with the other stitches, but it's that center stitch. I think it's gonna look great and we're gonna use that one. <laughs> So I'm gonna grab my first two strips. And what you do is we just take them and you butt, the, butt the edges up together like that. And then you just zigzag in between. You don't want them to overlap or anything. You just put them up against each other. And so, so that's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> This looks really cute. Let me do some more so I can show you what this looks like. Okay, got the first strips sewn together, but look how cute that looks with that stitch. Oh, I really like that. All right, so we got our first chunk. Now I just gotta sew a bunch more together. <laughs> the pattern recommends sewing them in sets of two. So I think I might actually do that and follow the pattern because it was, it, it was very helpful to be able to just put my hands on either side of the two strips and put them through the machine. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm just gonna put this back and grab the next two and just continue this process until I have 20 sets of two strips. So here we go. <sighs> okay, so when I was stitching, you guys saw that my needle broke right away and I switched it out. I put a new needle in and then I broke a second needle right away. And I'm not really sure why, but I think maybe my machine was not liking that stitch um, with the width that I had it at. It must have been just hitting my foot for whatever reason. I decided to test a zigzag stitch, just regular zigzag to see what it would look like. And this is what it looks like. So it looks very cool and it's very sturdy. It feels a little bit more sturdy than the, the pretty stitch. So I'm gonna continue doing the zigzag for the rest of my strip sets. You live and you learn and just for whatever reason, I'm not really sure why, but my machine was not liking that stitch and I was using heavy duty needles. So it wasn't that I was using like a delicate needle or anything. Now I'm gonna just continue stitching these together and I think this looks really nice. I think the zigzag looks good with the starry fabric. I like this color combination, by the way. This is cool. Very cool. I am going to continue sewing my little two strips together and then you sew those together and those together and those together until you have a full sheet of strips. I will check back in in a little bit and yeah, I'm just really excited to get this made. It's It's been a lot of fun and it's really fun to work on a project that, um, you know, doesn't take as long as a full on quilt and it's going to be something that I'm going to be able to enjoy a lot. You know, I'll use it as a bag whenever I have to go out of town for a day or two or if I plan on going to like uh, sometimes I like to go to Panera for like a little work day so I have to take my computer and things with me so yeah I think it's gonna be a really nice little bag that I'll get to carry around and just get to uh, be proud of it whenever I take it out so all right I'm gonna keep on sewing I'll talk to you guys soon good morning it is the next day <laughs> so I got a little ahead of myself <laughs> yesterday and while I was sewing all the strips together and everything I just got a little excited because it was really fun to do and I was having a lot of fun so I kind of sewed all the strips together and I don't think I recorded myself doing that at all so I apologize but I was just sewing them together with a zigzag stitch okay you didn't miss much it, and it did take a while but I'm gonna switch the camera around here so you can see it it looks so cool. I'm having so much fun with this project. I hope you can tell that. <laughs> but okay, let me switch the camera around. Ta-da! 
that is finished. Well, it's not finished, but that's what it looks like with all of them sewn together. So let me get close up so you can see the little zigzags. I think this looks so cool. This is gonna be a beautiful tote bag. Very eye-catching. And these colors are so cool. As we've talked about before, kind of out of my color comfort zone, but I'm really liking it. Really fun fabrics. So please just ignore the mess on the other end of the table, okay? <laughs> this is a working workstation. <laughs> I can't look perfect all the time. And let's see, what do I do now? I basically need to mark it so I know where to cut. <laughs> I'm not gonna see that there. I wonder if I should just go ahead and cut it. Yeah, because I don't think I'm really gonna see this marking because it's on black fabric and it's blue ink. I mean, I'm not gonna see any marking. So maybe I should just go ahead and cut it. Oh, but that seems like such a commitment to go ahead and cut it, right? I just don't wanna mess it up. So, okay. So they wanted to cut it like that and then all right, so I have plenty of, I have plenty of wiggle room. So if I need to trim more off on this end, I can. So I'm just gonna go ahead and wing it. <laughs> Make sure I'm on my cutting mat here. And okay, because this isn't super straight. Yeah, I think I'm gonna try to line it up with this bottom edge. So we're gonna cut it like that. Here we go. All right, well my rotary cutter is not cutting all the way through, but it is leaving a mark that I can then use to cut with my scissors. Scissors out here, because that is pretty thick with all of those layers of batting. There it is, the little trimmed piece. <laughs> so now we have a nice straight edge on this end. Flip this over. This side is any straighter. Not really. This definitely, the, the strips have kind of a curve to them, which is kind of odd. So I kind of got to work with that. All right, so we need 38 inches. So, all right, so I am going to mark with my pen for this part, because I think that will be helpful. So, and I'll just follow that, I'll just follow that line with my scissors then. Mm -hmm. Just kind of marking every few inches. So then I'm going to go along here and mark that a little bit better by lining up the markings. Whoa, why is that so off? This is getting a little more tricky because this has so much of a curve in it. Okay, what size pieces do I cut? Oh, okay, okay. I had confused myself. I thought I was cutting. Okay. <laughs> I even I even read this thing. So, okay, so the picture, let me see if you can see the picture. They have it here and they have like a white line down the center. So, I was thinking I was cutting this in two separate pieces, but we're not. I'm just um, cutting the edges and trimming this down to the correct size. And then they want me to do a stitch on both of the raw edge ends so my zigzag stitches don't come out. So that makes sense to do. I have to figure out how to do this because in the picture, these look super straight and really good. So I don't know what I did incorrectly or not quite right, but my my strips are definitely curved. I don't know if you can tell on camera. Let me turn this this way. Let's see, can you even see? It kind of curves that way a little bit. What I'm gonna do, let's see what happens because the bag is basically gonna be like this. So I've already cut this straight edge. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm gonna fold this over and just use this straight edge and just cut along there. So I am, but first I should do that, I should do that straight stitch. So these zigzag stitches aren't gonna start coming out. So I'm gonna do that first. <laughs> this is a, uh, this is fun. This is fun. I like, I like problem solving. So this is good. 
So I am going to do that straight stitch real quick. I'm gonna switch out my sewing machines because I missed my Juki. <laughs> so let me get that all situated and then I will check back in with you. I went ahead and stitched, just did a, like a really close small stitch all along that edge. So that's going to, that's just gonna hold those zigzag stitches in place. So now I am going to fold this over. The nice thing with working with fabric is it's very forgiving. So if you're off by a little bit, it's not, it's not, you know, a terrible thing. You know, you don't want to be way off. If it's off just a tiny bit, it's okay. Because this definitely has a curve to it, which I think is very interesting. I'm not really sure why. All right, so I want this to be, well, actually I can just use the markings on my table. So I'm gonna line the fold up with the line down here on my cutting mat. So the fold is gonna be lined up with this bottom line of my cutting mat. And then I need to get that edge up to 19 inches. And I am not going to stress it being like ridiculously perfect, okay? Cause there's always a way to figure stuff out. It's just not worth it to be super stressed about something. 19 and 19, yeah, this is definitely not square, which is, weird but you know we're gonna go with it and we're gonna see what happens <laughs> i hope it turns out okay if not it will be a learning experience i made all the strips the exact same way i don't understand why it is so off it's just not wanting to be completely straight this is so annoying but we're gonna make it as close as we can so i'm gonna mark this again this top edge the important thing i think for the construction is for my side edges of the bag to line up, okay? So that's what I am going to be checking with those line up. And then, whoa, that is such a harsh angle to go down. Here is the tote bag. It looks humongous. <laughs> Huge. That's a huge tote bag. All right, so I kind of just, you know, decided the important thing was for this, since for whatever reason my strips were curved, I decided that the, the important thing for this bag is for the edges, the sides of the bag to line up and for the top edge to be straight, okay? So my bottom edge kind of is at a slight slant. It's not super terrible. And that might actually get fixed a little bit because uh, later on in the pattern, we um, square off the corners. So I think it's gonna be okay. I think it's gonna be okay and I think it's gonna work and it's gonna be beautiful. <gasps> okay, good. I am relieved. That is the body of the bag though. I mean, this is huge. This is definitely like Mary Poppins style tote bag. Okay, I'm gonna be able to fit a lot of stuff in here. Now, what do I do? Oh, hopefully it's smooth sailing from here on out. Let me set this aside for a moment. Just lay it over on my extra workstation, AKA my bed. <laughs> it works as an extra table when I need it to. I need my pocket pieces. So it was actually very handy that we labeled everything. So that's gonna make this easier. <sighs> See, this is good. This is why reading instructions is so important. <laughs> Cause from the picture, it looked like I was supposed to fold them in half and sew them separately. But reading the instructions is giving me a whole different explanation. So I'm guessing they just like cut off the rest of the image on the pattern to save space and to save ink. So I have to sew this edge and this edge. So I'm gonna do that.
you can see, I am marking where I'm going to be stitching for the pockets. The pattern has very good explanations of where to make the markings and kind of how to go about um, creating the pockets for the inside of the tote. So that's what I'm doing here in this section. I think if you wanted to, you probably could make different size pockets and things for the inside. Uh, I just didn't feel like doing that. I just wanted to follow the instructions and I liked the idea of having just three large pockets that are the same size on either side of the bag. So we're just attaching everything and making sure it all is lined up there. The pins are definitely helping hold everything together. I would definitely recommend on, on these parts when you're stitching through the body of the tote that you would go slow. That's going to help your machine so it doesn't. it's not speeding through, pulling everything through because it is a little bit harder for it to pull through. And, and yeah, so just take it slow and you should be good. I was, I was a little hasty and I did, uh, bend or break a couple of needles in the process of making this bag. <laughs> so <laughs> whoops, you live and you learn, right? So here I'm just pinning where I want to mark or where I want to put the pockets of the bag. So that's what those pins are for. And let's turn on a little bit of music again, shall we? the straps now. I didn't record making the straps because I was just focused and, and didn't think of it honestly. <laughs> I've got my second strap here made. It's just strips of fabric with some batting in the middle and then folded to create like a strap and then this part is the part that attaches to the bag. So I got the first one attached. Now I need to attach the other one so it matches. So I am going to do that. Okay, there's one side. straps. Let's see what it looks like. All right. Let's see if we flip this over. Check it out. It is a huge bag. <laughs> I can't believe how huge this bag is. Missouri Star also has a smaller version of this bag, like a pattern for it. So if this is just too big, this would make a really good beach bag too. But it is gonna be a little bit smaller cause we're gonna square up the, the bottom and stuff, so. Well, hello, nice to see you. <laughs> it has been a few days for me since I recorded the last part of what I did, which I think was sewing the sides together on this bag. I didn't take the time to check the footage that I shot, but I think it was swing the sides together. So we have a, a bag. There's a bag situation going on. So here is our giant bag so far. It looks 
really cool just like this. But we've got some raw edges on the top that need to be finished still. And we're gonna be squaring off the bottom so it can actually like set on a table. So I've got that and I'm also putting a zipper on the top of the bag. We've still got some stuff to do, but we are getting close to the end. So I'm hoping to finish this today. We'll see how it goes and kind of if I'm able to stay focused basically <laughs> and get it done. So oh, I am tired. Just got done with a workout and my muscles are tired, but I'm ready to do some sewing. <laughs> so hopefully that won't take too much muscle. So. The next thing in the pattern that I am supposed to do is make the little covers for the ends of the zipper. So I picked this really pretty turquoise blue zipper. I quite like it. It's very long. It's a 30 inch, which is long enough for my bag. I just checked and it's actually going to hang off a couple of inches on either side. So instead of just leaving the zipper looking like that, which you could do, it's fine to leave it like that. The pattern has written to make like little covers for that part, which I'm gonna do. So I actually already made one cause I wanted to see what it was gonna look like. So basically it's just a little rectangle, but it's basically just a little rectangle of fabric and a little rectangle of batting. We've got it sewn like that. And then the batting is on the inside, so it's a little puffy. This just goes over the end of the zipper. So I'm just folding in the raw edges, which I'm assuming is what you're supposed to do. I've made enough bags that I know kind of how to do this part. There's that, and then this goes over the end of the zipper. So this should just go in there. I feel like it's gonna be a little tricky with the batting in there. But you just kinda gotta fiddle with it. Very exciting. I'm not actually showing you what I'm doing, so you can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> so I've got the end of the zipper in there. That's what it'll look like. I'm not, I'm not sure if I like it. <laughs> I am not sure. I think it's probably because the fabric's a little wrinkled, so I'll have to press it after I attach it. But that's what it'll look like. Just like that. I'm gonna grab a couple of my wonder clips and just clip that in place. Make sure it's straight clip it in place. So I've just kind of got it clipped like that. And it, that's just gonna hold that there. And I gotta figure out, um, here, let me point the camera down at my workstation so you can see what I'm doing here. So I wanna make sure that I've got plenty of zipper on either side of this handle out of the way. So I want it to be even amounts on both sides. Do, 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 do. This is pretty thrilling stuff right here. Am I right? <laughs> so here I've got the other zipper cover tab thing. And so I need to make that. So basically you just fold this. I've got my little piece of batting and my fabric and you just fold them in half and sew on the sides and then turn it right side out. And then you have your little cover. So I am gonna do that here real quick. See, so it's just sewn and then you turn it in right side out. This is a little tricky. So it is a little small. So let's see, do I attach these before I attach the zipper to the bag? What does the pattern say? Yep, it definitely says to attach the little end cover thingies before we put the zipper on the bag. I'm gonna do that. I just use a pen when I'm turning this out. So I just have a pen without the, with, that's like a clicky pen. So I have it without actual tip of the pen out. And I use that to turn this out the rest of the way and get the corners poked out. So they look good. The other end, I like these little, the little pop of color with like this coral color that I picked. I like it. I think it goes well because the the body of the bag is so colorful. We've got so many different colors and it's got the little stars all over it. I think it's kind of nice to just have the solid coral color, color as kind of like a little pop. I'm just trying to get this put in there. And I want the end of the zipper to actually lay pretty flat in there because that would bother me <laughs> if I could tell that it was kind of lumpy dumpy in there. 
So I'm gonna use the pen again to kind of flatten that out in there. Oh, that actually worked really well. Again, I'm gonna try to get everything nice and straight. I'm just gonna clip these in place. And there we have another little tab. So now I just stitch right across that bottom edge on the zipper and then that's gonna hold these little tabs in place. So I will go ahead and do that and then we'll get to a really fun part which is adding the zipper, right? Everybody acts like adding zippers is like this traumatizing experience, but um, I like adding zippers. I think it's fun. I, I enjoy a challenge though, so. But I think this is actually gonna be pretty easy. The pattern, this pattern again, has like such well written instructions and there's actual photos of each little step, which I really, really appreciate. So this is this has been a really great pattern. I would definitely recommend it. If you are wanting to make a large tote bag or I'm sure all of their other, all of Auntie Two's other patterns are probably just as well written with uh, great photos in there to follow along with. So let's get the little tab sewn on and then we will go from there. All right, so I added my little zipper tab things and I did a little extra stitching than what the tutorial said to do, but I kind of like squaring out the tab. I think the stitches look cute and then it's like very sturdy on there. And I went ahead and I put pins in the center of the zipper on both sides and I opened up the zipper completely on both sides. I've got two zipper pulls. So I did that. I'm doing it a little bit differently from what the tutorial is teaching to do. So I just feel like this is gonna be easier, at least for my brain. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna mark the center of the bag, which is at about 13. So we've got the center there and I'll mark the center over on this side too. And then I'm going to take, I'm going to move the bag handles out of the way. And I'm going to take the zipper and making sure that the zipper pulls are on the top. We don't want to put the zipper on upside down. And I am going to then pin the center of my zipper to the center of the bag using that pin that I put in my zipper. So I actually need to turn this inside out or like that yes like that all right and then i'm going to pin this to the center you know what actually well i'll use i i can use my clips instead because i've got a bunch of wonder clips because that's just easier and then i don't have to worry about poking myself <laughs> so i've got that and then I'm gonna do the same si same thing on this side. So I'm gonna line up where that center of the zipper is in the center of the bag and then clip it. All right, so I've got my centers lined up. Let me put these needles away so I don't knock them down. Now that I have that, like that, <laughs> now I'm just going to go and clip the zipper to the top of my bag here. And I'm just gonna clip it every few inches. How do you feel about zippers? Let me know in the comments below. Have you tried them? Are they scary to you? I don't think they're that scary. You know what, that doesn't, that's not right. This was not centered. What did I do wrong? Let's scoot this over. I thought I had a foolproof plan, but apparently not. At least not for this top edge, because we flip this. We want the poles to stay facing up. Okay, I've got a little give on that side. There, that's more of the center, I think. Redo. So I am clipping the edge of the um, zipper that does not have the zipper part to the raw edges of the bag. Just like that. Get one more clip there. Zipper is up. All right. Now I'm going to carefully flip this over. Center it on this side too. It's about like that. I don't know if I've ever put a zipper on this large of a bag before. <laughs> 
So this is gonna be probably a bit of an adventure for me, which I am totally fine with. And since I'm straying from the tutorial a little bit, hopefully I don't have to take out too many stitches. <laughs> uh, but I think it's gonna work. Now I baste the zipper, which is just stitching it so it's going to be secure for when we are going to put binding on. So I'm just gonna stitch like an eighth of an inch away from the raw edge just to hold the zipper in place. And then after that, then we put binding on, which I've already got the binding made just out of that pretty coral fabric. Let's take this over and baste it. I'm gonna do my best here. The sewing machine does not technically have a free arm, so I've got that going for me. <laughs> lovely. Wow, I'm really zoomed in. Hold on a second here. What button do I push? Here we go. So there we go. The zipper is attached. So I've just got to baste it on there just to hold it in place. So we still need to conceal these raw edges. And that's where the binding comes in. So let me show you. This is what it looks like on here. So you kind of get this little fold thing going on at where the zippers go. And then when you zip it, it kind of flips the zipper up and then it's like a flat lay thing and it's got this little, this little dangly thing <laughs> of the zipper, which uh, looks cute. Now we do the binding. So let's, let me look to see how they show to do it in here because it's different from how I do binding. So it's good to learn new techniques, right? So let's see here. Okay, so this is definitely a different technique than what I have done before. So let's see. I am again gonna use wonder clips instead of pins, I think. I'm gonna kind of wing this part too kind of following the instructions, kind of figuring out a way that makes sense to me, which is kind of the way that I figure out a lot of stuff. I just like figuring out ways that work best for me. And I think that's why I have such a passion for teaching you guys that with quilting, because there really are so many different ways to do stuff. And just because the person that you're learning from is teaching you, to teaching you a way to do something, does it mean that that's the only way to do it? And I think a, a lot of quilters think that way. They think that, well, I learned how to do it this way and this is the way it's supposed to be done because back in the day, that is how a lot of instructors instructed. They acted like, you know, if you do not do this the way that I am telling you how to do it, you're doing it wrong. And there was no forgiveness, you know, there wasn't. I've heard so many stories from people, you know, just really sad, honestly, because quilting is supposed to be this really fun hobby, you know, and really fun way to, you know, try something creative and fun. And when they were learning how to quilt, they were treated terribly. And sometimes it was by their own mothers or their grandmas who were trying to teach them. And it was just really sad. I just hate hearing that. I really do. So that's why I really stress, you know, try to figure out what works best for you. And, you know, if you don't agree with the way that I'm doing something, then figure it out your own way and you go, girl. I'm all for it. It's just really silly. And I think 
foolish to think that, you know, my way is the only way to do this. And if you do it differently, then you are wrong. <laughs> it's a silly mentality to have with pretty much anything. I mean, <laughs> it's pretty much anything, not just quilting, but life in general, you know? So, but anyways, let's not go down that rabbit hole. <laughs> All right, I've got my ends meeting up here for my binding. So, definitely need to trim off some of this, but I want to make sure that this is going to fit. Hopefully I'm not making a big boo-boo. Now I am going to sew these pieces together. Okay. Yes. So I basically measured out the binding to go all the way around like that and I was clipping it in place. And then I trimmed off the excess here that I had. I lined these up so when I sew them together using a quarter inch seam allowance then it's going to fit perfectly around the bag. So now I'm going to take out these two clips just so my ends are loose and I'm gonna sew these two together to do that to make it one continuous strip around for the binding I am just going to put them right sides together and then sew them together with a quarter inch seam allowance might have to remove a couple more strips or clips Boo. talking is hard sometimes all right I'm gonna sew this together real quick here this is definitely the biggest bag I have ever made. So I'm lining up my edges there. And on this side of the zipper, we'll also clip it. So my binding is completely clipped around the bag. See that? So now let's see what am I supposed to do? Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully I didn't skip something. Okay, it looks like now I sew all the way around to attach the binding. Okay, okay. My workspace is just too small. I need more space. <laughs> I'm constantly moving stuff to get other things in the right position. Blah, blah, blah. Anyways, this would definitely be easier if my machine had a legitimate free arm where kind of everything else kind of tucks underneath. But unfortunately it does not, but it's still doable. It's just a little bit more complicated to do it this way. I will persevere. <laughs> I will make it through this difficult task. All right, so I am going to attach this with a quarter inch seam allowance. Being very careful not to stitch through the zipper. Though the space between the edge of the zipper and the zipper part of the zipper has plenty of space. So you just want to be mindful that you're not... Um, your stitches aren't wandering <laughs> as you're going. saying that but it is very very fun so now I do believe we get to square off our corners which is such a fun process I love doing that because then the bag really gets its sturdiness I am going to let's see turn the bag inside out so we're gonna do that <laughs> another one of these you guys this has been so much fun to make Plop. so I turn this out now now what's next <laughs> oh okay so we're gonna continue the binding first of course of course yes 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 so now we pull the binding 
this away and attach it. I just sew it all the way around to conceal all of the raw edges of the bag. I gotta do some more stitching on the binding. So I'm gonna do that. Basically, you fold this over, you like fold it way over. So the zipper teeth are sticking up and then you stitch one line right underneath the seam allowance, which is gonna help the zipper teeth stay up. And then we're gonna stitch another line closer to the folded. So there's gonna be two lines of stitches. There's gonna be one like right up here and then another line down here basically. So I'm gonna do that. Probably won't record it because this video is gonna be ridiculously long already. I will meet you back after I've done that. <laughs> all right, I got the binding all stitched down. Looks good. That was tricky. Let me just tell you that. That was tricky to get on. I actually bent my needle. I had to switch out my needle because <laughs> I accidentally got too close to like the super thick part of the um, zipper and stuff. Be wary of that. Now we get to square up the bottom of the bag. So I'm going to roll out the corners here so it's laying as flat as possible. I'm actually going to pull the handles out so we don't accidentally cut the handles because that would be a big bummer, right? <laughs> See, now this part, they don't have super clear instructions. So what, I go like this, like that? Okay, so we go like that. And what, we go up eight inches from the center. Just measure, so like right there, eight inches. Okay, stitch across the line, creating a triangle and square off the bottom of the bag. Do not cut triangles off. Well, we're gonna do that. So I drew my little straight line on that corner. So I'm gonna stitch that and then see what it looks like. And then we'll do the other side if that looks good. Okay, I did the first corner and it actually looks really nice. Well, you can't see it from the camera probably, but it does look really good in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the second corner. Cutting through these thick layers is pretty tough. Definitely take it slow. That's a really good key when you're cutting or when you're stitching into thick layers like that, you wanna take it slow. Hopefully your machine can handle it. Mine's been doing all right. I did have to switch out the needle a couple of times with these thicker layers, but yeah, so far so good. And this is almost done now. I'm really excited. I think all we need to do is make the little base that's like the sturdiness for the bottom of the bag. And then I'm gonna try to put these stays in the binding. So the binding has like a little channel where these stays are supposed to go in, which are to help it be more sturdy on the top. But the binding was pretty tricky, so I'm not sure if these will fit in there or not. I would, if I make another one of these bags, I will definitely make the binding wider to make it more easy to fit these in because the, this is a very, a very small channel. So we'll see if it works. If not, it won't be the end of the world. All right, I'm gonna stitch this next corner and then we will continue going and we are almost done. All right, are you guys ready to see the bag? It is finished. I realized as I was going through the footage that I did not record making the the stabilizer that goes down in the, the bottom of the bag. So actually, let me show you that here real quick. I was just so excited to get the bag done. I just, uh, I forgot. So this is the stabilizer that goes in the bottom. I just used that same fabric that I did for all the other accent pieces. And you basically just cover that craft flex material with the fabric. So that's what I did. And then you iron it on so it's, you know, secure on there. So, and then if you need to wash your bag, you just remove this and then you can wash it. And yeah, and this is, it's still flexible, but it's very nice and sturdy and it's great. And it gives, the bag bottom, a really nice, um, sturdy bottom. <laughs> so it's really great. But all right, I am going to show you the bag. 
So I did stray away from one of the parts of the pattern where she has you make little zipper pulls that you attach to your zipper. But I had this really cute Ruby Star Society ribbon. Remember that was wrapped around the jelly roll? And I like to use that ribbon for stuff and I thought that would make a perfect zipper pull. So I'm testing out two different ways of doing it to see what I like best. So I did this one as a bow, which I think looks very cute. And then this one, I just tied a knot so it's like a longer pull. See, Ruby Star Society. And uh, I'll kind of, I'll figure out which way I like better and then have them both that way. But here is the finished bag. Ta-da! How beautiful is that? I, I love this bag so much. And as you guys know, I had so much fun making this. It was pretty easy. Uh, my A few times my machine had a little bit of difficulty getting through those thick layers of the batting, but I think that's probably because I was trying to go too fast with the stitching. So it was probably user error in, um, in that respect. Real quick, the Missouri Star Quilt Company polyester thread. Um, again, I really liked it, but I had, I did have it break several times. So I don't know if that was because I was just going, I was trying to go too quick. Um, I did adjust my tension a little bit. I loosened the tension a little bit and then I just slowed down for the rest of my stitching and, and then it didn't break after that. So I would not blame the thread for that. Again, it was user error, but, um. But yeah, it worked really great. I think it looks really good on the bag because polyester thread kind of has, a, well, you can't really see, but it has, it's slightly shiny, which I, I like. And it just, uh, it looks great. It looks great. I used it for the entire bag. I didn't use any other thread on this. So I really like it. I hope you cannot hear the rain. It is raining right now. If you can hear it, I apologize. I just have very bad timing apparently with my recording but um so yeah so that's the outside of the bag so it is gorgeous I mean look at that it's so pretty I love it so much these handles are wonderful they are sturdy I just use regular batting on the inside you can use like a thicker a stabilizer to have them be a little bit more sturdy but I kind of like them a little floppy I think it looks nice and they feel really good in my hand. It won't be uncomfortable on my shoulder. Let's see, it fits, fits beautifully. I really like it. I think it's very nice. So let me open it up here. The zipper opens like a dream. And that is the inside. You guys, this bag is huge. I mean, if you ever wanted a Mary Poppins style bag, this is perfect. It's legit like a carpet bag. <laughs> so this is what the inside looks like. You can see the pockets. We've got three big pockets on both sides. And I'll be able to store all kinds of stuff in here. This would make a really good project bag if you're make working on a big project. Yeah, it's just wonderful. The stays. These came with the pattern, which is very convenient. And this is supposed to go in that little channel, remember? Up in here that we created with the binding. So I am going to slip those in here and see if I like it. Let me get the camera over here so you can see what I'm doing. So here, there's Obi. She's, she's keeping an eye out for any bad guys that might come up. You know how it is. <laughs> if you have dogs, you know how it is. So I'm just taking the end of the stay and I put it in one end of the channel. And then you just kind of push it through. Well, I got it in there before. It's gonna be a booger. Of course, when I'm recording, it's gonna be difficult. It was quite easy to get them in before. Let's try this side. So you just kind of feed it in like that. And then the other. 
another one. Goes in on the other side. I have never made a bag with stays before. It was definitely interesting. So there now the, the top of the bag stays open very easy, just like that. And it is ready to, you know, pull stuff out if I need to. Now, I don't know if you are supposed to be able to leave these in all the time. I don't know if I made a whoopsie with the construction of the bag or what, but I know I cannot close the zipper with the stays in. So I might have done something wrong there or that might just not be how it's designed. It's not really explained in the, in the tutorial, but it does work to hold the bag open like that. So. I know if my cats want to get in here, I might leave that in there so she can play in there. You know, Kimmy, she loves to get into stuff. What's really nice is these are very easy to remove then. So if I need to close the bag up, I just remove the stays. So it took like a minute to put the stays in. It takes like 30 seconds to take them out. So no time at all. Very easy. Just like that. And then I could just keep them in the bottom of the bag. They go like right underneath. If you see, I can take the little bottom out, put my stays down there. Oh, I kept the little, the little starry tag. <laughs> I thought I could use that as a bookmark or something. And then put the cover on over and there it's ready to go. Zipper up. And I'm ready to go taking out shopping or, you know, whatever I decide to do with it. I hope you had fun making this bag with me. I sure had fun making it. I mean, highly recommend. Anybody wants to make a bag, this is a good one to choose. <laughs> it is huge. I mean, I am not a little person. And this bag is humongous compared to my torso. I hope this was interesting to you. If not, that's okay. <laughs> that's okay it's not for everybody but uh i had so much fun making this and i hope it's inspired you to try on a bag it doesn't have to be this one but there's uh there's all kinds of bag tutorials out there and they are so much fun to make so it's really kind of like reinvigorated that part of me that really enjoyed making bags several years ago so uh i hope you enjoyed this thank you so much for using my link if you use my link Missouri Star Cool Company has a bunch of bag patterns available. So even if you don't like this one, there are other ones available. And uh, just thank you so much everyone for the support and your kind words. We're jumping up to two videos a week starting this week. This is the first one I'm releasing on my new schedule. And um, yeah, just thank you so much for everything. And I hope everybody has a great rest of their day. And uh, I will talk to you very, very soon. Bye-bye.